Today we are going to so talk on something that we all love eating and that is salt. And you must have seen lots and lots of videos which talk about salt. And who am I talking about salt? I am a kidney doctor who, who day in out see pay people who eat too less salt or too much salt. <coughs> so what are we going to see in this video? So we are going to see is salt really required for us and how much salt should I take? There are so many different kinds of salt, so which should I choose? And lastly, do I really need to take salt? Is there any alternative for salt so that I can control it? So first thing, so do we really need salt? Of course we need. Our body is nothing but salt and water. And sodium chloride, as we all know, is the table salt. Uh, that, that is there 130 grams in our body. That's too much. And we need it. And throughout the evolution, we've all loved salt. But then the problem is, uh, we really don't know how much we, we should eat. Uh, the minimum uh, we should eat is the minimum is three grams and anybody who, who wants to eat less than three grams for long period of time end up with problems and so it's in like anything it's a u-shaped we say it's a u-shaped association too little harmful too much harmful so three to ten grams is a sweet spot taking anywhere between three grams and ten grams is is is, is a way to go forward <coughs> The world over WHO, World Health Organization and many other organizations put the cap at 6 grams and 6 is very difficult for people to, to target to and that's what we have seen and throughout the last many many decades even though people know that eating salt is more, they all failed miserably and they eat on an average anywhere between 10 to 14 grams way beyond the recommendation. So how do we conquer this problem? So now then we know that we have to eat less than uh, uh, 10 grams if you don't have any disease less than 7 grams or 6 grams when we have any kind of disease be it hypertension heart disease kidney disease stroke or anything um, uh, so when we asked people how much salt you eat and when we, when we measured how much they actually take by collecting their urine and then checking we all found that people's perception about their own salt intake is highly fallacious meaning they, they, they think they eat okay and they take, actually they take more and, and vice versa. Uh, so salt is a perceived sensation meaning uh, it is an acquired taste. So if somebody is grown eating salt at a high amount, they think that's, that's right. And as again somebody who, who, who grows eating too less salt and he think and that's the a, that's a correct one. So if somebody changes his eating behavior from high salt to a low salt, he may have this problem for the first one or two months but after two months, his body and his taste sensibility changes and the new lower salt he perceives as okay salt. So it's very easy to conquer. The next is what kind of salt I should eat. Is, is it the pink Himalayan salt or the rock salt or the raw salt or the refined salt which is commercially available iodized all over the world. The first thing is what we actually eat most of us are eating is the iodized salt. The problem with iodized salt is some countries have, uh, are, have shown that increased incidence of thyroid disorders like thi autoimmune thyroiditis are seen. So we really don't know is it really true but then there is a lot of questions asked about the normal iodized salt we eat and I feel maybe that's maybe true. Another thing is or these salts to make them free flowing additives are added and, and another th important thing they do is they chemically transform it so that it contains nothing but sodium chloride. So conventionally the raw salt which my grandparents and also when I was very young I used to take is the, the raw salt we, we get from the sea. These are the, the rocky crystals, the crystals which we see and these contain uh, impurities like magnesium which are actually good for us. And maybe those salts are also if we all want to go back, it's okay. And so we use little, I use little bit of the, the untreated salt. Um, and then I use a little bit of the table salt which contains iodine. Most, con most places in the world are not iodine deficient. They do have um, amount of, uh, enough amount of iodine and if your diet is going to have oysters, sea, sea, sea fish and you will have a uh, good amount of iodine. But then um, if you are away from the coast and if your region is iodine deficient, you need to take the commercially av av available iodized salt. Otherwise, you are free to change to the older generation. The, rock, the raw salt and these salt tend to have hold on to little water they are more clumpy and they are not very attractive and that's the reason the people have added additives and the one that is currently people are crazy about is a pink salt or the Himalayan salt so pink salt is nothing but basically the sodium chloride which has been contaminated with more than 84 chem different chemicals 
so the, the magnesium the iron salt give that the unique pink reddish hue to it and it's quite fashionable for people to change to anything that is new and good looking and you know pink salt really looks good and if you ask me sir doctor is it good <coughs> And I won't say like you can, you have to completely change over your entire salt intake to pink salt or the Himalayan salt. I would say that you can use it a, a little bit of it because this salt contains things like uranium, uh, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, which are highly toxic to human beings. But unfortunately, we don't eat salt in kilograms per day. Fortunately, we eat only few few grams per day. And these impurities are in extremely low amount in this particular pink salt. So if you're going to eat a, a tiny bit of a, a half a pinch or a pinch of salt per day, I'm sure it may not do you any harm. But if you ask me, does it do any good? I really don't know. We really don't know. There are a lot of people who think it works. And if you really think so, and if you're going to eat only a pinch of that per day, I'm okay with it. But what I like the most, especially in people who really have to for a disease purpose or for a healthy living, really want to uh, take a, a salt alternative or uh, want to con con eat something which has which can happily lower their salt intake but at the same time does not interfere with their with their happiness of eating salt so what i like the most about uh, salt is i like salt additives so one thing it does it it helps you to cut down your salt intake but does not take away the pleasure of eating salt like what i have here is is a salt substitute it's a nutritional yeast so they do not they, they don't smell like the the baker's the yeast or the baking yeast what we use these are nutritional yeast they are almost taste neutral and they come in powder or flaky form and if you add this to the the to the low salt prepared meal you make it enhances the flavor and also gives that saltiness and so you can enjoy you can mix it you can cook use it for cooking you can use it for adding on on your salads or on your food which is cooked and i also like a little bit of ginger to to add to that and I love adding a little bit of onion powder to it. And, and if anybody loves all these herbs, so these are, I use a mixed herb. So I make a mixture of this. And so what it does help me is it not only improves the flavor of the food, but also helps me to cut down on the salt what I take. Uh, so next time when you really want to have questions about salt, a little bit, little bit of any salt is uh, harmless. And uh, but the word of caution before I end this video is, do, do not go by blindly with the, 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 the low sodium version of the commonly used salt because it's available in different countries in different names. These, con these contains potassium chloride 10 to 20 percent. And if you're old, you're taking some kind of BP medicines, you have kidney disease, if you have heart disease, you're taking too many pills, you have to be extremely very careful because <clears throat> this can increase your potassium levels in the body and with that can be extremely dangerous. So if you are having any kind of disease or any kind of medicines you are taking, please avoid the low sodium version of salt, which is called low salt, no salt. Uh, um, so you are kindly avoid that. But otherwise, any salt is, uh, is safe. Any of the salt what I've spoken to you is pretty safe when you take in low amount. And please don't forget the salt substitutes. Thank you all for watching this video.